Hey guys, Little Chess here with Mission Forge, and today, guys, we're going to talk about sharpeners. So, as you can see on the table here, guys, I got an array of sharpeners and things that sharpen knives, and it's just a small bit compared to what's out there in a huge, wide world. Um, but I'm going to go briefly over a bunch of different things here for you guys and kind of tell you what they're good for, who should use them, and why, possibly. Um, and then at the end of the video, I'll kind of talk about maybe what would be better for you, if any of these. So with that, let's go ahead and let's jump into it. So the first thing I'm going to talk to you guys is something that most regular, everyday people who are not knife enthusiasts or not knife makers, not knife collectors or, or anything along those lines, is it's just going to be one of these, it's just going to be one of these little handheld knife sharpeners that cost about, what, 15 bucks at a Walmart. So are these great? Are they good? Should a person who is an enthusiast, a knife maker, everybody use these? If you're an enthusiast, if you're a knife maker, no, you should not be using these. Um, these are cheap. Uh, they're only set to one angle. It may sharpen a knife. It may not. It may put an edge on. It may not. It may reprofile. Sometimes as the little pieces on the inside, little carbide pieces inside, get dull, you have to push a little harder. It scrapes too much off and it could potentially ruin and dull your knife. Now some other knives will work fine. If you are just a person who is just, I just need a quick knife sharpener just to pop, sharpen a pocket knife real quick, take it out, couple of quick cuts, boom, you're good to go and fine. It will put a, okay, it'll put a decent little edge on your knife. So are they great for the knife maker and stuff like that? No, but just for the regular person, this is not a craft, this is not a craft they enjoy doing. This is not a business they're doing or anything on this, not a hobby, a person who's outdoors, whatever. They just kind of carry a knife around with them or need to sharpen a knife real fast. Hey, this is perfectly good for what they're going to do most of the time. Now, the next thing we'll talk about though is maybe is these right here, the electric sharpeners. Um, now there are various different models out there and uh, guys, real quick, you're gonna notice I've got several models here from WorkSharp. I promise you, I am not sponsored by them. They're not paying me or anything. I paid for everything here. So, you know, I'm not holding back on my opinion on some things. But anyways, what you're gonna see is just, you can have these type of sharpers out there. Now there are various different models out there. Um, this particular thing here is a WorkSharp culinary uh, sharpener here. So this is meant strictly for like kitchen knives. Now what's great about that is that it's preset. I don't have to figure out angles or anything like that. And if all you're looking to do is sharpen kitchen knives, or if you're a person who makes kitchen knives, this is actually a great option because it kind of helps you understand like, this is the thick thickness of most kitchen knives. This is where it should be set to roughly. And this is gonna give you your best angle and degree. That is good there. There are a lot of different manufacturers out there that have something like this. And I use this here for my own personal kitchen knives. What's great about it is that when you have a completed knife, it's finished and you just need to refine the edge. You're starting to dull after some use. This just takes a few seconds. You turn it on, it's got several settings. You run your blade through a few times and your blade is nice and sharp and it will, it will skin tomatoes, all right? And that's just a 120 grit and they have different belts for different grits. Now you'll have to lower this to take the belt out and change it, but it has got a lot of different grips or grits. So if your person just wants to sharpen some kitchen knives, get your knives back into good working order, if you're a knife maker who focuses on kitchen knives, or if you're a chef, a culinary person, a cook, whatever, hey, this is gonna work great for what you're gonna do. Your job, especially if you're a cook or a chef, is not to make knives, it's to make sure that you can cook a good dish and not have dull tools in the kitchen. A dull knife will hurt you more than a nice sharp knife. So make sure you sharpen frequently, and this here will do that job Real quick, real precise. Again, there are many different brands out there and there's nothing wrong with it. So, is this a bad option? Absolutely not. It is a great, fantastic option. One that I actually use myself. Now, another one is it gonna be something like this. Now, this is the WorkSharp Ken Onion type. Um, now, what's good about this is that this can do a whole bunch of different type of knives. From kitchen knives, pocket knives, to hunters, uh, drop point knives, it does a lot. And it you it's adjustable, you can adjust the angle. You can go from, uh, what is this, 15 degrees all the way up to 30 degrees by just twisting this knob. You got a blade guide here. So, but if you have a uh, knife with a guard on it, you can move this out of the way. It's real easy to uh, change the belts on here. So 
you just pull up on this bottom one here. Then you can slide your belt off and put a new belt on, and it comes with various different grits as well. Um, both of these sharpeners you could buy different grit size uh, for. So starting from 120, and I believe they go up to about a thousand grit on these belts here. And then plus they have a polishing belt thing, and then they have a a, 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 a strap a strop one. So these are great. Um, it's a good it is a good knife sharpener. So if you're a person who's already got completed blades. A person who's has, who is a knife collector, enthusiast, a hunter, um, you know, an outdoorsman or something like that. This is actually a great option as well. Um, once you kind of work out how it's supposed to be done, um, again, it only takes seconds to do. So if you're not a person who wants to spend a lot of time doing things by hand, the electric sharpeners are great. Now, a downside to the electric sharpener though is, is that they will put a little bit of a concave, or sorry, a convex edge on there. So think. Uh, apple seed type uh, design. Some knives cannot go in there. If you have a knife that, op that cuts better at a, and you need it to cut nice and cleanly with a flat grind, say like a fillet knife or a razor uh, blade, you know, like a flat, blade, a flat razor, then you cannot use these. It's going to add a bit of a convex to it and then it's going to uh, not cut like it did before. But most other knives, they'll be just fine with, to include kitchen knives. So, and actually, we usually recommend a lot of knife makers actually turn their edge into a little bit of an apple seed because the extra mass, the slight extra mass behind that edge supports the edge, preventing it from chipping or breaking as much. So, again, hunter, outdoorsman, cook, chef, person just who's already got completed knives wants to kind of freshen up the edge a little bit, great options, nothing wrong with them. So let's move on to stones. So you got various different type of stones out there. These are just some real, real quick cheap ones here um, that I picked up. Um, and you can tell it's cheap because there's an edge here, a bit of a lip here on the edge, which should not be, it should be dead flat. Um, so what is good about stones is, is that they come in a lot of different uh, grit sizes from, they were from like, 60 grit probably, I've seen them as low as 60 grit, as high as like 4,000, 5,000 grit. They come in ceramic, they come in this type of stone here, um, they come in diamond uh, diamond plates. Um, there's wet stones, almost all stones should be wet of some sort. So you got wet stones which only uses water, you got oil stones only use oil, you got stones like this which can use oil or water, but if you choose oil, you can't use water, if you choose water then you can't use oil later, later on, you can never switch around, okay? Um, you got the diamonds which don't use any of that, um, and they will give you extremely clean, sharp edges. Some of the sharpest knives you're ever going to have. And the reason why a lot of people like these, a lot of like Japanese knives, a lot of high-end knife makers use stones is because of that. But the biggest downside to using a stone, say a big stone like this, is you have to have a pretty steady hand. So if you are not a steady hand, if you are a person who, who has a hard time keeping their hand from move, so as you move the knife, if you can't keep that angle the same when you start it here to when you get to the end, you're going to change the apex, which is the very point of the tip, or you could potentially round it or dull it, and you can actually make it worse. By, it's, what you're doing is you're reprofiling it. So you need to have a very steady hand. So it's usually recommended to either um, when you first start out, you go, you start backwards. You don't want to go forward if you're not good at it yet. But some people are so good they can go forward and backwards with it. So you have to have that nice steady angle, and then you would drag it back. And of course, you want to make sure this is wet and soaked with water. Um, this one here is multi grit. It doesn't really feel any different. This side's more coarse than this side, but um, there are a lot of great brands out there. Uh, but if you're a beginner. I don't recommend you start with the stones because you need to kind of get the feel for it. Now, it's okay getting a stone and practicing, get yourself a cheap knife like this, and then practice on it till you kind of get the angles right. Um, now, there are some things out there that can help you, like there's these little wedges that you can sit behind the knife and it'll help you get the angle right, what's a 25 degree, and what's a 17, and all this other stuff. And then it'll kind of help you learn how to get it right every time. Now, even if you're a professional knife maker, 
You can just use those wedges, put the wedges on, and just use it no matter what. The only problem though is eventually it'll start wearing the bottom of the wedge out. Um, so who should use this stone? It doesn't matter. Knife enthusiasts, knife makers, it doesn't matter. I don't use these stones that often. I am not a big fan of just because um, I, for some reason, have a very hard time keeping my hands steady. I twitch a lot. So, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't or can't learn. Do I want to learn and get better at it? Of course I do, actually. I, I'm always looking to improve. Um, but there are a lot of great brands out there, a lot better ones than these. So stones are great because they have some of the best sharpening capabilities and they've been used for thousands of years um, and they're tried and true and I would always recommend to anybody, hey, if you want to get sharp knives, you want the sharpest of the sharp, then you got to go with stones. They're going to give you some of the sharpest knives you've ever had in your life. So this would be great for culinary stuff. This is great for even outdoor things. But keep in mind, the sharper your edge is, the more likely it's going to chip and break because you're taking material away when you sharpen it. So it's always something to keep in mind uh, with that. So that, guys, that's stones. Just a quick dirty on the stones, you know. Are they bad? No, no, no. They're fantastic. They're great. You just got to know how to use them. So what about this little stone? Well, what's great about this little stone is that they come in usually about four or five different grits, from about 120 to about 600 or so. And these are good because a lot of people will take these outdoors with them. So what's great about, say, a stone like this is that you don't need to have the knife set to a certain angle. You can, but you can just hold the stone, and it's much easier to match up the angle of the blade with, uh, to this stone than it is on a bigger one. And then you can just do it by hand. You find out what the angle is supposed to be. You can generally see it. And then just nice and easy, going all the way across. Of course, you want your stones to be wet with water at the very least. Um, and then you just follow along the edge. And you can get nice, good, sharp edges with small. So this here is about 400 grit. So, who should use these stones? Anybody. Again, most people who are outdoorsmen, hunters, fishermen, so like that will usually have some type of stone with them um, because they're going to be using their knives probably a lot more frequently. A little stone like this is great for something like that. Easy to keep in your pocket. It's going to put a, a decent enough edge on, the, uh, on your knife. So this is meant for sharpening and honing. Um, again, they, so they have various grits, you know, for like I said, from 100 to like 600. This is like a 400 if I remember correctly. Um, so, but this is great for hunters, fishermen, and stuff like that. People are going to be out there and just need to kind of put a quick little edge on their, on their knife. Uh, this is definitely not for reshaping or reprofiling, but they do have them. So who should own this? Like really anybody uh, who's an outdoorsman, mostly. Um, some knife makers have it. Like if I'm going out somewhere, I try, actually when I go backpacking, hiking, I bring this exact one here because I want to be able to make sure I can put the edge back on my knife and keep it nice and sharp. Yes, you do have these little knife sharpers, uh, little stone sharpers here, and they're not bad. Not great for high production, though. So if you're a person who's making a lot of knives and doing production work, probably not that great. You'll probably go through these, uh, probably wear through them pretty quickly. This is good more for the individual, for doing something outside or one-offs or something like that. What about files? Can files sharpen your knives? And yes, you can. Files have been used to sharpen knives many times. A lot of people use files all the time to sharpen some type of blade. And you'll see them used for like machetes, um, you know, axes, uh, big knives that do a lot of chopping and hard work. Um, the thing though is, is a lot of these files won't give you super, super sharp knives because a file, it doesn't really have a grit. What you're going to see files have is different things labeled as like, like a, like a single cut and double cut. You know, they might be like coarse, medium, fine, ultra fine. And they can put a, a good edge on there. It's not going to give you a great edge, but it will put a good edge on your knife and it will get sharp. But you're not going to get the knife, sharpest knife possible. But if you're in a pinch and you need to sharpen something quickly, you can. I see, like I said, I see people use these on like machetes, lawnmower blades. Um, they're not particularly this one here, though. Some use big ones. This is a little hobbyist files. The reason I use the hobbyist files is because it's got a little bit more finer cut to it and it will put a good little edge on your knife. So, can you sharpen a knife? Absolutely you can with a file. Just don't expect razor sharp or super sharp with a file system. Now the elephant in the room, 
the these precision knife sharpening systems. Now I got two here, um, but there are various different kinds out there. Just go on Amazon and type knife sharpening system. You're going to find a whole bunch of different ones. Um, some more expensive than others. Lansky's spoiler on the cheaper end. This is definitely my work sharp one here so far. My favorite. Um, about 120 bucks. So it's about 60 bucks. What I have to cost. Remember, you do get what you pay for. All right. So what are the pros and cons to these? Well, the pros is on both of these that it's going to give you pretty much very consistent angles uh, when sharpening your knife. And that's actually the, the biggest pro when it comes to knife making, uh, when you make your knives, because consistent angle on both edges of your knife will give you a very sharp knife, a superior edge compared to some of these other methods out here that I showed you. Um, you know, if I put this at 25 degrees and I use the rod here, it's going to give you 25 degrees all the way around on both sides. Same thing with the Lansky system. Um, so you're going to have very consistent uh, uh, angles. Also, they come with various grits from, you know, in different types. You know, you got uh, oil stones, water stones, you got diamond uh, uh, abrasives. Um, you know, so you're going to have, and it's going to go from, you know, 220 to super high up on some systems. Some of them only up to, you know, 800, but you have your ceramics and then your, 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 your straw. Other systems might even have higher than that. So that all depends, but overall the pros are great, are there because it's gonna give you a very sharp knife and it's super easy to do, anybody can, generally anybody can do it. Um, the con though depends on the system itself. Each system has gonna have its own downfall. This one here, um, the thumb screw's kind of in the way, so if I try to use, like if I have a knife that is at like say 17 degrees, I can't because the thumb screw literally stops the rod. I can't do that. I'll have to take the knife out, flip it around, and then do it on this side here, which can change the angle. Also, like you know, you have some here, a little bit of room, it wobbles, so you might be at 25 uh, one stroke, but then up at 27 and another. Um, but you know, that's just one con. There, you know, a couple of cons. I'm not gonna go through all of them. You know, this one here, the base might be a little lighter, and these are a little heavier than these stones, so it's gonna be a little bit more forward heavy. So you have to hold this down to keep it a little bit more steady. You know, as just another con, these are magnetic latches here, so you can have potential metal dust getting into them and be kind of a pain in the butt. But ultimately, the pros will almost always outweigh the cons on each system. It just depends on which one you're willing to put up with. So, which knife system is best for you? Knife sharpening system is best for you? Well, there's no good answer. Because the truth is, it all depends on what you're trying to do and what your goal is. Are you a chef, a culinary person, a cook? Something like this is all you're gonna need. This will do the trick almost every time because it will make cutting your your food so much easier. It'll make being in the kitchen so much more enjoyable. This is all you need. It takes seconds, it's easy to change out the belts, and it's fairly inexpensive to maintain. Belts are cheap. You could buy probably 10 of them for about 20 bucks. You know, and you'll be good to go for a long, long time. This is a great option if that's all you're trying to do. Now, are you a person who also could be a chef or culinary person, but maybe you're more of an outdoors person, you're not a knife enthusiast or anything like that, you have like one or two knives you like to take out with you when you go out hunting or camping or anything else like that. Heck, are, do you, are you a woodsman and just need sharp axes even? Then something like this is all you're really gonna need. Again, it comes with various different grits of, of belts, you know, from 120 up to about 1,000 grit, and you got your stropping and polishing uh, belts on there and this will do a wide range of knives by it's adjustable and again it takes only seconds so this might be something you want as well also if you're a beginner knife maker and you're or you're in a sharpening business and you just need to put a quick edge on something so it's nice and sharp this will do the trick just fine as well are you just an average Joe and you just man what can I use to sharpen my knives then hey this will do the trick for you I would say about 75% of the time um, I don't really like it. I never use it. If I had to choose if I were you, I would pick one of these over that any day of the week, but that's fine. Are you a person who's starting out and wants to go more old school, traditional? Then these are going to be what you want. Are you also, you know, the, the like I said, a file can put an edge on a knife. They use files all the time on things like axes, on chainsaw blades, on lawnmower blades, on machetes, and on a bunch of other big tools that don't require sh super sharp, but sharp enough, files are a way to go. They're fairly inexpensive and it's easy to put an edge on them. They cut metal fast. 
Stones, a stone like this is great for a, an outdoors person, a person who goes out a lot and it's something you can just throw in your pocket and your bag and you can put a quick knife, uh, a quick edge on your knife, kind of rehone it after you're done chopping into some animals such as a fish, deer, buffalo, bison, I don't know, whatever you want. Um, these are great. So if you're that kind of person who is on a budget or needs to just put something, sh uh, a quick and dirty edge on, this will work and so will this, even though this is a 400 grit. Now, are you looking to become more of a aficionado? You really want a good sharp edge if you're like a, especially if you're into the Japanese style of knives. Um, are you a person who's also a cook or a chef and wants the sharpest knife possible? Because most kitchen knives, um, you want the sharper, the better. They're not hacking into bone unless you're using cleavers or choppers, which are different. Or, or they are sharpened differently, made differently, but most other knives, fillet knives, steak knives, and all this stuff, pairing knives, outdoor knives such as hunting knives and camp knives, stuff like that, or swords even. Stones are the way to go. Um, requires a nice steady hand. You're going to need water for a stone or oil, but if you use oil, remember you can't use water anymore. And if you same thing, if you use water. I always recommend water if you can, unless it's a diamond uh, sharpener system that you don't use any of that. But it's going to require a nice steady hand and consistency, and that could take time to learn. So definitely not for the beginner, but you know maybe more the intermediate to definitely to the advanced knife maker to or to the knife sharpener. So if, those are, if that's what you're going to be, your goal is to be a knife sharpener, it's a sharpening business you have, or if you're a knife maker, it's always good to learn to have those. But if you're looking to put on a very precise edge without a lot of thinking, without having to fit, worry about if you got twitchy muscles or something like that, and if you're a knife maker, a knife enthusiast, um, an outdoorsman, heck, even if you're a culinary person of some sort, the knife sharpening systems are the way to go. If I had to choose any of them, it would be the knife sharpening systems here. And the reason being is, is that they are very precise, they're adjustable, and it, you don't have to worry about you know being at the right or wrong angle. While the Lansky system here is definitely the, one of the cheapest models out there, it does a good enough job. I used them for several years, and I do like them. They do put very good edges on your knives. Um, a little bit sloppier than say this system, and I'm sure there's other systems that are better than this one out here. But if you're just getting started, you're a knife maker, a knife enthusiast or whatever, Lansky system is great. They work sharp if you can afford it. Wait 60 bucks, you know, 70 bucks, get this system. It's a little bit better in my opinion. Um, a lot better actually. Get this system here, but both are great. So this should definitely be for beginner to medium to, to advanced because these give you very, very precise um, sharpening angles and you get some great cuts. So of all the ones that I would recommend, it would be these, but any of these will work. To include your big two by 72 sharpener, because I do sharpen my knives a lot on those as well, because that does a fantastic job just as much as these. So with that guys, hopefully you found a lot, a lot about these, a little, not a lot, but a little bit about them, what's good and what's not good about them. They all have their pros and they all have their cons, but when done properly, they all will work. Maybe except for that one over there. But with that guys, hopefully you found this video entertaining, uh, informative, educational. If you have, go ahead, hit that like button. Also, you got any comments or suggestions, leave them down below. Also, don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that bell for more notifications. With that guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you later.